Hello everyone! Today we're going to be looking at the best use for other players' houses in multiplayer, because they don't actually need to use their own houses, you can use it for your benefit. In particular, we're talking about the fully upgraded houses because they have the most room inside. On the outside, they take up a 3x5 space, so that's a total of 15 spaces in your field. However, on the inside, they have all this room. Think of all the things you could do. The first thing we want to do, obviously, is to remove all the things that take up space. So, tables, chairs, any furniture that's on the ground, go ahead and take it away, put it in your inventory, go throw it in your pond. Unfortunately, in the vanilla game, you cannot remove the children's beds or any of their furniture, so that stuff's hanging out. Windows are obviously acceptable, it's the floor space we need. We can't do anything about Penny, she's just hanging out. Alright, then once you're done disposing of their furniture, we need crystallariums. Yes, they can be a little bit expensive to make, but using this trick, I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it because it's going to make you so much money that everything after that is just going to be almost too easy. Don't be afraid to block off their bed entirely as well, because they don't need sleep if they're in your game. But on a more serious note, they can just sleep in your bed or one of the other beds or just pass out every night, it doesn't really matter. Actually, don't make them pass out because they'll probably respawn in their own bed and then they'll be stuck. Everyone just sleep in one bed, that way you can utilize the other cabins. This is the layout I've decided on. I'm not sure if it's better to go in rows every third row essentially. This is the one I decided on. Play with it for yourselves. Either way this is going to be a money maker so it doesn't really matter. The children's room gets a little crazy but you can actually place crystallariums in the beds so that gives you a little bit of extra space. You might as well utilize any little piece you can because the more you have just the more money you're going to make. Don't worry about the NPC placement either, you can just build right around them. They're not real people so they don't even matter. Do be warned though, if you do actually have children and you're going to do this in one of these houses, just don't. The kids are going to be running around these narrow little passageways, they're going to be in your way constantly. You're going to want to go ahead and dove them immediately. By the time you're all said and done, it should look something like this. Like I said, you could probably do it a little more efficiently than I have, but I was just kind of laying it out the way I normally do. I'm not going to spend too much time playing with it. You'll get the idea of how much money you can make just from this. Also, I have no idea yet how many there are. We're just going to count the number once we're done with this little trick of ours. Now, the next thing we need to do is decide what to put in these. Normally, you'd put diamonds in there because they're going to make you 150 gold per day. I'm actually going to use star shards because they're actually 144 gold a day. It's slightly less, but it's just something different to look at. I'm sick of diamonds. Interestingly enough, we only need one star shard to make this whole thing work, and we're going to do it fairly quickly, because in the rest of these, we're going to put in quartz. Why quartz? Well, I'm glad you asked, because you're going to find tons of it as you're playing through the mines. It is absolutely everywhere, so you're going to have a big surplus of it. Plus, it processes really fast in the crystallariums, so when you take your stack out of your chest, which you've obviously been saving because you watched this video, you just go ahead and run around, put them in the crystallariums, they'll be done by the end of the day. Or if you're impatient like me, you're just going to wait for tomorrow anyway because it doesn't really matter. That was a lot less painful than I thought it was going to be, so that's a nice change for one of my stupid ideas. They're all pulsing away, that means they've all got a piece of quartz in them. It's only a few hours before they're done, I'm just going to skip to tomorrow for the sake of getting this done at a reasonable hour. I just want to make sure that I have them all filled. It looks like they're all good. Like I said, if I miss one or two, I don't really care. Not the end of the world. All right, let's skip to tomorrow. Now we should have a whole bunch of quartz ready to go. And we do. Beautiful. Now, this is something of a moment of truth in case they patch this trick. But normally, once you have a crystallarium done, like you see here, many times over, you can put a new item in. Say you had a diamond or a star shard, put it in, and there's one already done. Take it back out. And it's now producing star shards instead of quartz, and you got your original star shard back. So all you gotta do, put one in, take it back out, put one in, take it back out. Now by the end of today, within the hour, all of these are going to be producing star shards instead of quartz, and I only had one star shard to start with. They haven't patched this yet, I suspect they will down the road, so take advantage of this while you can. But one star shard is going to produce me much gold every single day, all utilizing a house in the farm that's not even needed. And just have an empty space in slot number one in your inventory, then all you gotta do is rapidly right click along the way, unless you're using a controller, then hit whatever button it is. But the star shard goes in, comes back out, oops. Unless you have a crystallarium that wasn't full, then your star shard disappears into there and it's gonna take a few days before you see it again. But the trick still applies, you're just gonna have to wait for it to come back. Again, diamonds are slightly more valuable, I'm just so sick of looking at diamonds and crystallariums, I just don't want to do it right now. It's six gold per day difference over the course of several hundred, so... That's going to be a few hundred gold per day probably, but this will still be lots. And we're done, just like that. The star shards and the diamonds take a total of 3 days and 11 hours to complete the crystallarium run. I would just go ahead and call that 4 straight days because that awkward 11 hour fraction. You're never really going to be able to do it efficiently, so I would just generally assume every 4 days these are going to be done. So using my handy time skipper mod, 4 days later, we're going to collect these, see how much it's worth. 
Again, remember that this all stems from a single star shard, which I still have. Actually, I need to get rid of that now to see how much I make every day. And 15 spaces in my field. That's it. 15 spaces. That one's still a quartz, but that's okay. We'll pretend that one doesn't exist. Then obviously, as soon as you remove it from the crystallarium, it starts going in the next batch. So in four days, we'll do this all again. This is just going to be easy repeating money. I guess we replaced those few, but whatever. That's fine. The last one has been plucked. 226 star shards in total. Like I said, with a little bit more fish and layout, you might get a few more, but ballpark, this is what you're going to get. Now we got to see the value of this. Keep in mind, this is only a single house at this point too. You could do a total of three houses of this, even your own house if you want to, potentially four houses, including your basement. But this is the value of a single house. This is the amount every four days, we'll call it. Three and a half technically, but realistically every four days. So the value of that is pretty sizable, 150,000. Rounding up, 150,000 every four days. Every four days you gotta walk around, it's not a lot to pick up, that's easy. Now, like I said, you could do your own house and the other farmhouses too. That would bring the total up to almost 600,000 gold. That's 150,000 gold per day just to pick up star shards. You could do this starting with one. If it was diamonds, it'd be a little bit more. This is just easy money. At that point, you're just collecting again. I like ideas like that where you don't actively have to redo things, you just collect. 150,000 gold a day. And that is approximately 150,000 gold per day off of a little more farm space than what you see here. Add one more of these houses right here, tuck it up here in the corner where it's not even on a growable patch, and you still have your whole field to use. So you can make 150,000 gold per day with the houses, but still have your entire farm field, no problem. The only tricky part about this idea is going to be making the crystallariums, but if you're a multiplayer and anywhere into the game at all, it's not that hard to get these materials. The hardest ingredient to get here is probably the battery packs, and that's not a big deal. You can buy those from the traveling merchant on occasion. If you have some lightning rods, set a few of those up, you'll get tons of batteries. It's not that hard to collect them, just make sure you save them when you get them. If you're in Skull Cavern, you're going to find some occasionally for drops. In Skull Cavern, you're also going to get tons of iridium and tons of gold, so gold and iridium bars speak for themselves. And besides that, the effort is well worth the reward. Like I said, if you had four houses full of these, that's 150,000 gold per day on space you're not even going to use on your farm. So that's just beyond any money you could ever actually need in this game. You'll get the gold clock after a few short weeks. Anything after that is just easy. This basically breaks the game. Now what people used to do for this similar idea is build sheds on their farm. You can build a shed from Robin, it has a similar footprint in your field, doesn't take up a lot of room, and you can basically fill it with whatever you want. They're fairly cheap and easy to build, 15,000 gold and 300 wood, but in the end they do take up a bigger footprint so you can't actually put them in as many of the fun places. For example, I could put a player cabin in this space, no problem, and it would be completely out of the way. The shed, however, doesn't fit there. I need to put it somewhere on my field where it's actually going to take up valuable space. Not the end of the world again because it has a bigger inside than an outside because magic. And I could get something in a neighborhood of 225 crystallariums in a player house. I'm not going to get 225 in here, but we'll see exactly how many we can get. This is what my layout left me with in the shed. Clearly it's not nearly as many, but let's fill it up with some star shards and see what happens. I'm just going to straight fill these up. I'm not going to use the trick at this point because I don't have to. I feel like I've demonstrated it well enough for you guys to have it. If you don't have it yet, well, watch it again or watch my entire video on it. Whatever you want to do. Have I mentioned I have a Twitter? I'll link it in the description. Go ahead and follow me there because hey, why not? In four days, this large shed will produce me a bit of money. Sheds aren't a bad idea. They do essentially make your farm bigger. They make your field bigger. But still, use the player houses before you're going to use the sheds. The player houses are just superior. You put them in areas you don't need to farm on, they'll make you a ton more money. In fact, they'll make you so much money you don't even have to do anything else. Just have fun at that point like I do. Four days. Now, a fully upgraded player house gives me 150,000 gold. A little less than, but let's call it 150,000 gold per harvest. This shed is going to give me considerably less, I can tell you that right now. Is it still going to be worth it? Well, we'll find out. Probably, because this is a neat little shed and the footprint it has is much smaller than the actual space it gives you. 61 star shards. Every single one of those into the bin. Don't forget to give one to Gunther at some point for the museum collection. As you can see I also did growing pots inside my house. Definitely not nearly as worth it as crystallariums are. And the value of that? 40,000. That's still not bad. That's about 10,000 gold a day. If you had more sheds obviously it's more but 10,000 gold a day to harvest a few sheds. Pretty good money. Think about that for a sec. 10,000 gold a day. I consider that a pretty good day on my legitimate farms, harvesting truffles and doing other things. So this idea is very much worth it. Even if you just take one of your multiplayer houses fully upgraded, like I've done with this one, do this trick. That's still almost 40,000 gold a day. 40,000 gold a day. 
that is tons to work with. Most of the crops you do are going to get you 40, 50,000 gold and those take a ton of effort. This one is going to take you some resources and effort to get set up, but once it's set up, all you got to do is collect it. I basically could have collected this entire thing just while I'm sitting here saying this. All you've got to do is hold the mouse button while you run around. You'll collect all these, throw them in the bin. It's not going to be past 730 by the time you're done. 40,000 gold a day. Game breaking. Do this to break the game. If you want stupid amounts of money legitimately a multiplayer, do that. From there, do whatever you want with the field. 100% completionist. I feel like you guys get the idea of this one. Go ahead and do it. It's well worth the time. This is one of my ideas that really was truly worth the money. So if you do this and then my desert idea yesterday with planting trees and the tappers, well, easy money. Don't ever need money again after that. A few weeks of this, boom. Set for life. Hope you liked it. Goodbye.